Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Solskjaer's United hosted Carlo Ancelotti's Everton in the Premier League. A win could have put United level with City on top, whilst Everton were looking to make their way into the top four. And in the end, an exciting game ended 3 all thanks to goals by Cavani, Fernandes and McTominay for the Reds, whilst Ducure, James and Calvert-Lewin scored for Everton. The XG implied that the quality of chances was fairly even, with both sides being fairly clinical, ending 1.72 to 1.56. The XG time map clarifies this, showing that sloppy defending on the last play of the game cost United. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. Here's how both managers lined up. Solskjaer stuck to his preferred 4-2-3-1, with Pogba initially in a 2 alongside McTominay. Carlo Ancelotti on the other hand switched things up, with a fluid shape but usually a 4-4-2 diamond with hammers in behind Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin. Let's take a closer look at the tactics, starting with what Everton looked to do in possession, focusing on a few key points. When Everton had the ball from a goal kick, both centre-backs would drop into the box to receive, but United would push Cavani and Fernandes high to press so Everton would often be forced to go long. But at times, they did build up into the centre-backs in the first phase, and United did press fairly high once again, and they ended with a much lower passes per defensive action. And on the left, when Greenwood was drawn in narrow onto the second centre-back to press, it meant that Digne was usually the easy outlet. And if Juan Bissaka subsequently pushed high up to back up the press, we would see Richarlison move wider to receive the ball down the line, although he was often tracked well by Lindelof. Down the right, the mechanism was similar when Rashford was drawn to a centre-back, either going directly wide to Holgate or going through the pivots first. Mason Holgate was much more vulnerable on the ball and was a press target when the ball came into him. And in fact, of Everton's starters, he has the second lowest pass accuracy. But Fernandes could stay deeper in the press at times, looking to track Davies or Gomez to make the numbers more even, as Hammers created a 4 versus 3 in central areas. And United looked vulnerable when Fernandes pushed higher onto the second centre-back on the press, as a pivot could then easily be found free behind the first line of pressure and then advance higher up the pitch, potentially drawing other markers in. In fact, this is how the moves that lead to Everton's first two goals come about. For the first, Fernandes, who usually sat on Davis, was drawn into pressing Keane. So, when the ball goes out to Digne, there is space between the lines for Davis to attack unmarked. After a 1-2, he has the space to then play in Calvert-Lewin between the lines unmarked. His cross is dealt with poorly by De Gea and De Cure sweeps up. For the second, Fernandes is once again drawn to Keane, leaving a clear passing channel to Davis, as Everton have the numerical advantage due to using the diamond. They now have time between the lines and Ducure has moved higher between the other lines to receive and then play out to Digne. It breaks to Ducure on the far post who finds Hammers for a fine finish. But United were the more dominant side, with 62% possession, so what did they look to do? When United had the ball, Everton had no interest in pressing, ending with a passes per defensive actions of over 35. They usually sat in a deep to mid block 4 4 2 diamond, with Hamez sitting deeper on Pogba or Fred. The diamond naturally meant that Everton were light in the wide regions, and United looked to take advantage, with Scott McTominay triggering this by dropping into the right centre back position. With the three centre-backs split across the width of the pitch, Wambasaka and Shaw could both push higher. This is shown in the average positioning. We could often see Greenwood dropping extremely deep to pick up the ball, almost as a second pivot, as Pogba was often occupied, whilst Fernandes could then move wider to occupy the extra midfielder.
Alternatively, when Greenwood stayed high to support wan with Richarlison high, it was an Everton midfielder who had to come across to create a 2 vs 2. This often created a gap behind the Everton fullback for a United runner to potentially attack, and it was Fernandes who tended to come wide to turn the 2 vs 2 into a 3 vs 2 overload. This would then usually leave a man free deeper, usually Greenwood, to look for the cross. We see elements of this in United's first. Rashford has switched with Greenwood, forming an overload with Wambasaka and Fernandez against Digne. As a result, Gomez has to come across to cover. The three rotate and Wambasaka has drawn Digne deeper, giving Rashford acres of space in which to cross. Cavani then finishes well at the back post. And more commonly, it serves to allow Greenwood to move into more central areas, ready to attack the box, whilst giving Fernandez more room to operate if Gomez or Richarlison tracked Greenwood. For United's second, we see McTominay in the right centre-back position, whilst Greenwood has moved central as wan is high and wide. Fernandez has moved wider and this allows wan to receive. Greenwood, as discussed from his central position, can make a run into the space created behind the fullback as Richarlison is high up. The ball comes to Fernandes and Davis is half worried about Greenwood's run, giving Fernandes the space in which to finish. Overall, United were somewhat unlucky, despite the XG, as two of Everton's goals came from individual errors, but Ancelotti won't care as it is another point towards their Champions League ambitions. But I want to know down below in the comments what you made of the match and where you think both sides will finish. If you want a closer look at both managers' tactics, check out these videos linked at the end of this one. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. And a big big thanks to Benny for supporting me on Patreon on the Ultra tier. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.